Okay, I'm here. I've got your update on Naresh Bot's hearing from today, September 13th. Let's go. Basically, today's motion was about discovery and about Brady evidence. And even though those two things are similar, they are actually quite different. And we got into the difference about it a lot in court today. Now, to explain uh, the concept of discovery or disclosure, I will hand it over to one of the great legal minds of our time, Miss Mona Lisa Vita. Don't you wonder why Trotta gave you his files? I told you why already. He has to. By law, you're entitled. It's called disclosure, you dickhead. Or discovery. He has to show you everything, otherwise it could be a mistrial. He has to give you a list of all his witnesses. You can talk to all his witnesses. He's not allowed any surprises. I'm not trying to make light of the situation, obviously, but uh, that is legitimately how I learned what discovery was when I was like nine years old. Discovery in this case means that both sides have to give the information that they have. Um, but this doesn't happen this early. The deadline for giving discovery is 60 days prior to the beginning of a trial. But if you've been following along, you know that we don't have a trial date yet. The trial date is going to be set at another hearing, which is going to be on Monday, September 16th. This is where Brady comes in, and that's why we have this motion today. So while the defense can put in their you know, motion for discovery, uh, they haven't done that yet. This motion was for Brady evidence. Brady evidence is more one-sided. That's evidence that the prosecution has that is exculpatory, meaning that it is possibly favorable toward the witness and can prove innocent. If the prosecution is in possession of any exculpatory evidence like this, they are required to turn it over to the defense in a timely manner. It has nothing to do with the rules of discovery or the deadlines associated with it. So what Mr. Ben Alverham, Naresh's lawyer, was saying today is that he believes the prosecution is in possession of some Brady material and he wanted it. The Commonwealth was saying, no, actually what we have is just normal discovery. We don't think any of it's exculpatory, so you can wait. That's what they're fighting over. Mr. Ben Alverham said, Quote, we are still investigating where Monta is. And this is when they really solidified what is seemingly going to be their defense. Their defense is that Monta is still alive and Monta left on her own, basically just ran off. So what they're saying is that they're doing their own investigation. They are doing their investigation to find out where Monta went. And they need some of this evidence in order to do that and in order to put up their defense. So the biggest item that they wanted is the CCTV footage from the hospital where mom to worked from July 27th. Remember, there's footage of her sitting on a bench after her shift with a friend, talking to the friend, and then a black sedan pulls up and mom to gets in and drives away. But the prosecution also has her phone records and her Uber account, and we know that Momta had ordered an Uber, but that that ride was canceled. So the big question, since we found that out, was who was driving this car? Was this another like rideshare taxi type service, or was this somebody who Momta knew who gave her a ride? So the defense is asking for that. They were also asking for any police reports related to this. They were also looking for additional police reports related to the family who was living in the basement because they're like, listen, I am assuming that you've interviewed them, but we don't actually know if you have. We want to know what they have to say too. The defense also asked for the body camera footage from the welfare check that the police performed. The reason why they asked that is because they are saying that the media has been portraying Naresh in a negative light by saying that he didn't want to report his wife missing on August 2nd when the welfare check was done. But their contention is that their only reason he didn't report her missing is because the police told him not to. They said... After Naresh said that she had done this before, the police were like, okay, well, you know, see if she comes home in a couple days. If not, give us a call. 
Then Naresh uh, apparently texted the officer on the 4th. The officer did not get back to him, and so he called on the 5th to report mom to missing. He's saying the media has misled people and have not been talking about this, but, I mean, we knew this. I've talked about this. You can go back through my videos, but whatever. Now, Mr. Sweet was back for the Commonwealth, and he said that he didn't believe that the items that the defense was fishing for were exculpatory at all. Like, he believes that all of these items are just normal discovery items, and thus shouldn't be handed over now. They should be handed over after the trial data set and after the regular discovery motion uh, is put through. He also accused the defense of skirting reciprocal discovery by claiming that this evidence is exculpatory. Because remember, Brady is one way. So the defense can ask for the prosecution's evidence, but there's nothing that they need to give the prosecution in return. So this is a trial tactic, according to Mr. Sweet, that the defense is using. And he's, again, contending that this is not exculpatory at all and not Brady. It's just normal. The judge did warn Mr. Sweet, though, that if it comes to light that they sat on Brady material until it's too late, then it's not going to be good for them. There could be sanctions. I mean, that could, like Mona Lisa said, potentially lead to a mistrial. Sweet again said that this is a discovery re request dressed as Brady and said, quote, stop playing games. But the defense got back up and said, listen, we believe that Mom took off on her own. And furthermore, we believe that that person who picked her up, we need to find because that person could help us prove that our client is innocent. We believe that either this is somebody that Mom ran off with or it's somebody who maybe she told her plans to. So it's very important to find this person and prove that Monta is still alive. The defense said that they also want the cell phone GPS data because they believe that the prosecution has uh, been misleading the court as to those two phones uh, being together at the same time. And I think what he might be referring to is August 3rd when Momta's phone called Naresh's phone. I'm guessing he's saying that those phones are apparently together, which, I mean, let's be real, they probably were. Um, but he wants all that data so he can disprove that. So the way this all shook out was that the judge partially granted the defense's request. They ordered the prosecution to turn over the CCTV footage from the hospital and to disclose whether or not police told Bot to wait prior to reporting mom to missing, which again, we kind of know that they did and we've been talking about this for weeks. But the defense is not getting the cell phone data, the GPS data, any of the police reports, anything like that. They'll get it all eventually, but we're going to have to wait till regular discovery. I really thought they were going to go after the Tesla data, but I guess I was wrong. So who knows? But that's what happened today. I did go live. Everything will be uploaded to my YouTube.